Saints of God of Camp United Methodist Church and beyond, thank you so much for joining us for worship. And in our sanctuary and all over town, you could see that it's almost Christmas. So this season, this is a season of Advent where we're preparing for, anticipating, waiting for, and to celebrate the birth of our Savior, God with us. So in this season, where we light these candles of, of peace, of hope, of love, and joy, that we would not just experience these, these in an almost kind of fashion, but recognize that Christ came to bring about an altogether experience of love, joy, peace, and hope. So thank you for worshiping with us. May we, we be awakened to the altogether experience of Christmas. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, I say to you all, saints of God, good morning. Praise God that you are here responding to God's love. And I thank you for all that are joining us online right now. Praise God that you are with us, that together we are in God's presence, experiencing God's love together. And as a way of reminding us of the very presence, the triune presence of who is here with us, I invite you to take a deep breath as we hear the chiming of the Trinity. Tanner and Madison, if y'all would come, I hear y'all have some chrismons from the chrismon tree. Do you have some? What do you have? What do you have? A shell. Look at that. It's beautiful. Where do you find shells? Yeah, besides sand, what else is there at the beach? A lot of it at the beach. There's waves. What else is at the beach? Water. So a shell typically will remind us of Water, where you can scoop up water and you can pour it out. So water cleans us, right? Have you ever been to the beach? And you've played in the water? Was it fun? Yeah. So we can have lots of fun and delight in the water. When we see this shell that's on the tree, it's supposed to remind us of our baptism, the baptism that cleanses us, that nourishes us, and it reminds us of the joy of our salvation. Now, is there another one? Do you have another one? What do you have? What on earth is this? You think it's a fish? Do you think it's a fish? I think you're right. So those who have been baptized have known the joy of God's love for us. You know what we're called to do? Jesus said one time, we're supposed to be fishers of men. We're supposed to go and share the love of of God. We're supposed to not just go fish for fish, but Jesus said you're supposed to be fishers of people to go out and share this great love with all people. We're supposed to be fishers of men. Lord Jesus, thank you for the salvation that comes through your love that we were reminded in our baptism, and thank you for your call to make us fishers of people, to share your great love with all people. In your name we pray. Amen. And this time, I want to invite Judy to come and lead us in the lighting of our Advent wreath while I put these back on the tree. Pray. Gracious God, we pray for an altogether love to fill our hearts and to fill our world. Embolden us to love you, to love our neighbors, and to love ourselves in a way that recognizes the beauty and brokenness in each of us. Give us a depth to our love that moves beyond superficiality and into a deep awareness of you. Remind us that we are fully loved by you and we are called to fully love others. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Today we light the candles, peace, hope, and love.
pray actually you just take a deep breath with me to receive this as we prepare to hear God speak to us through the scriptures. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit that as we encounter your word today in the midst of this season where Christmas is almost here, awaken us to the fullness of your altogether peace, hope, love, and joy. And all God's people said with me, Amen. Reading of the gospel. Gospel reading comes from Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother... Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man, this mask is gone. her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne the son, and he named him Jesus. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. There's a, there's an ancient, you may be seated. There's an ancient story in the history of the church that lives on today. It goes like this. One day, Augustine, church father in our tradition, was walking along the seashore, walking on the beach. And he saw a little boy with a shell going back and forth to the water. And he saw what this boy was doing, and he said, What are you doing, child? And the child said to him, I'm trying to take all the water from the ocean and fill up this hole. Augustine said, It's impossible. It cannot be done. It's too much. To which the boy said, It's not any more impossible than you trying to understand the incomprehensible nature of God's love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And when Augustine looked away for a moment and looked back, the boy had vanished. Now, church tradition maintains that an angel had been sent to Augustine to remind him that intellectual assent can only get you so far. That this incomprehensible nature of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, can only be experienced. And it's so much greater than what we can understand Trying to understand all of it is like trying to put the water of the ocean into a single hole in the sand. When I was thinking about this altogether love, I thought about that. I thought about the shell on our Christmas tree, and I thought about John Wesley, whose favorite question was, is the love of God shed abroad in your hearts? Is the love of God shed abroad in your hearts. See, John Wesley himself, similar to Augustine, had it all up here. He knew the Greek. He knew the Bible. He had it memorized. He knew all the seminary answers. But it wasn't until a moment that Wesley had his heart strangely warmed. It wasn't until Wesley was uh, almost shipwrecked that he had this moment of there has to be a deeper thing of love that cannot be explained, but it has to be experienced. And almost love says that 
we have to work to make God love us. And almost love is a love that tries to intellectually ascend the ladder. But the incarnation, the altogether love of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is not about the ascent, it's about the descent. It's about the fact that love came down in the form of a virgin when there was no place at the end. It's hard to conceptualize how deep God's love for us is. So God, not staying remote in the heavens, comes down and says, I will show you what love is. Love is Christ. Who was Christ? And I'm reminded of the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 13. Love is patient. Love is kind. It keeps no record of wrongdoings. It is not envious or boastful. This is exactly the attitude that Christ embodied. This altogether love that encompasses and invites us in. You see, legalism says we have to do more. God says, I love you the way you are. And I meet you where you are. So like Wesley, I would ask you the same question. Is the love of God shed abroad in your hearts? Not just here. Not just because you've been coming to church for a long time. Not just because you do. These are all good things. But is the love of God really shed abroad in your hearts in a way that you cannot explain to people, but you have only experienced it? Because I've experienced it at camp. Now, I don't have time to go into all the stories of this experience of love, but I do want to highlight one particular moment. I remember after we found out the death of Greg Cole, may he rest in peace, I remember coming in here and announcing it to the choir, and I remember, I remember choir so beautifully what you did for Greg's family. I remember them singing songs that Greg Loved singing songs that Greg now in the church triumphant is singing along with us and part of that great cloud of witnesses. I remember seven something in the sanctuary. It was dark. I remember experiencing God's all together love and the way that the family was able to participate in this all together love. This love that we had for Greg outpoured to the family and I can tell you that you can't explain something like that you can only experience it so my invitation to you this year is to experience God's love not to read about it in the book not to try to explain it to someone but to experience it for yourself and in turn Give the experience to someone else. Church, we really are the answer to each other's prayers. I could tell you story after story of when I tell people I'm a pastor, they begin to list off all these things, and I say, I don't believe in that God either. I don't believe in a God that says you have to change and become this way and that way. I believe that God changes us because he loves us. We don't change first. The change is a byproduct of God's love for us. But I meet so many people that don't know or don't believe or at one time did believe but no longer do that God loves them. This is the most elementary, but the most important lesson in all of Scripture. That God loves you. God loves you. Not by your merits, not by anything you've done, but the simple fact is because you are created for a purpose. You are created by the one who loves perfectly. And I promise you, you don't have to look very long to find someone who needs that message. We believe that all people are welcome at this table. We believe that it's God's love that draws us in. So as we receive communion today, as we journey towards the incarnation, remember, love came down. 
And because God loves you so much, and because it's incomprehensible, you are called to go and love others. That is the greatest gift that you can give. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. you now as we encounter God's love to join me in this great Thanksgiving liturgy. I will read the light print and you're invited to respond in unison in the bold print. It should be on the screen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, you formed us in your image, and you breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. When nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to be a light to the nations. You scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts, and you have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You put down the mighty from their thrones and exalt those of low degree. You fill the hungry with good things, and the rich you send away empty. Your own son came among us as a servant to be Emmanuel, your presence with us. He humbled himself in obedience to your will, and he freely accepted death on the cross. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by the water and the spirit. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread gave thanks to you, broke the bread, saying to his disciples, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. Pour it out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Christ Jesus, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. As we wait in this almost Christmas season until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at the heavenly banquet through your son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God now and forever. And the saints of God in this Advent season waiting said together, Amen. I invite you 
to unseal the top portion and receive this gift. This is the body of Christ given for you. And in the same way, this is the blood of Christ shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we have encountered you in the spoken word. We have encountered you at your heavenly banquet, a foretaste of what is to come. God, now we continue to center ourselves as we encounter you in the musical word. We invite your presence as we welcome you to transform our hearts so that we may transform the world around us. We pray all this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The birth of a child always brings us a sense of awe and wonder. God's wondrous love is shown as he came down to us as a child in a manger with a young virgin named Mary and a simple but righteous carpenter named Joseph. Jesus, the long-awaited Savior of the world, is God's gift of love to you and me.
on this joyous, holy of holy nights, the long-awaited promise was fulfilled for God's people. A new day had dawned. As the shepherds returned to the hillside, they could not know or understand that the baby in the manger would not challenge the Roman political rule. Rather, he would deliver them and us from the sins that oppress us. Truly he bids us to love one another. His law is love and his gospel is peace. God loves you deeply, go and share that good news with someone else. Just one person that God is love and that God loves them. Go in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.